I've spoken about side effects that can happen when taking Zepbound, Ozempic, Wagovi, Sexenda, or Manjaro, but it's one thing to talk about it and completely different um, to experience it for yourself. Yesterday, I had the absolute worst episode of constipation in my life. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you why I believe it happened and what you can do to prevent it from happening to you. Um, this episode is brought to you by my new program, Be Brilliant on YouTube, where we help you brand and build your YouTube channel so that you can share your stories of transformation, reach the audience that you're here to serve, and inspire hundreds of thousands of people. Just imagine the impact that you could have in the lives of others by showing up and shining, by simply being your brilliant self. And at the same time, monetize your message too. I monetized my channel in just 45 days, which was surprising to me, but I took notes and recorded everything that I did right, everything that went wrong. Um, and today it's bringing in thousands of dollars. For this year, I will have made thousands of dollars on this YouTube channel. And I'd love to show you exactly how I did it. So if you're interested and would like my help in building your YouTube channel and you showing up and shining, simply email me at Angela at BeBrilliantMovement.com. That's Angela at BeBrilliantMovement.com. And I'll also put the notes um, and I'll also put it in the description below. Okay, so let's get into it. Hello, bold, brave, and brilliant ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to Zepbound Journey with Ange. I'm Angela Durant. My friends call me Ange. And I'm someone who has struggled with my weight most of my life. Since I was a little girl around the age of seven is when my challenges with uh, obesity began. At my highest weight, I was 331 pounds. I'm only, I am only five foot two inches, two and a half inches tall. So I'm not that tall, but at my heaviest weight, I was two, I was 331 pounds. Okay. When I started on my Zep Bound journey, five, almost five months ago, I weighed in at 296 pounds, just four pounds from being at 300 again. Right. Um, this is a picture of me before and after. And actually this before picture was from years ago at my highest weight of 332 um, pounds. Okay. Um, so that was over 10 years ago. And the um, picture in the green dress, if you watch many of my videos, you know about the green dress. And that is a recent photo of me. Um, now that dress buttons, but before, you know, it, it didn't. I was just able to get into it. Okay. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, so, um, if you're new here to the channel, I want to welcome you to the channel. Um, I've lost almost 50 pounds in just about five months, and I'm super excited about the progress, but I have a long way to go. So stay tuned with me. Hang in there with me because we're on the journey for the long haul. I have like 100 pounds more to lose. So I have plenty of weight to lose. Um, but again, if you're new here, welcome. It's so nice to have you. Um, please take a moment to subscribe and ring that notification bell. It'll really help us. And our goal is to, to impact as many lives as we can. We really want to get our message out there. And so by you subscribing and, um, and liking it, if you like the episode, it really does help the channel. So thank you for doing that. Okay, so let's jump in. Let me tell you, I just want to tell you a quick story about what happened to me yesterday, right? I've been on Zep Bound, like I mentioned, for almost five months now. And up until recently, I really have only had very mild side effects. That was until yesterday. And let me just say, it's one thing, um, it's one thing to be able to talk about side effects, right? Right. But I'm what I'm about to share with you is not because I read it in an article right, or in a medical journal. It's because I experienced it myself. And um, by the way, we we have um, company today um, over my shoulder here, either here or here um, is um, Biscuit. That's my little um, she's a Yorkie poodle. That's Biscuit. And Biscuit, just so you know, um, was sleeping 
um, on the floor until I turn the camera on. Whenever she sees me do an episode, she always likes to get into <laughs> she always likes to get into the frame. So if you've seen me take do an episode on my sofa, if you look in the frame, you will see biscuits somewhere. For some reason, she knows when I'm when I'm going on video, and she likes to be a part of <laughs> a part of it. It's kind of funny, but just wanted to mention the obvious here, either here or here, however it shows up on camera. Okay, all right. So um, I'm not sharing this with you because I read it in a book. I'm sharing it with you because it actually happened to me. Um, yes, as of yesterday, right? And I'm always saying to you. Um, it's kind of funny that this happened um, because I'm always saying, oh no, the side effects, they're so mild. Nothing ever happens. Oh, you just eat right. Just drink your water and you'll be good. Right? <laughs> well, that wasn't the case of what happened yesterday. So let me, let me just share with you the details. So then, um, you know, something really happened yesterday that really changed the game for me um, in this journey with this medication. I mean, and it was, it will change me forever because it was pretty um, severe. I, you know, in my opinion, it was severe. Um, all last week I had been eating really well, drinking a lot of water and um, getting my protein in. And I'm pretty regular anyway. Like I'm not really challenged with constipation. Like I, you know, I'm pretty regular and it is even weird to have this conversation, you know, because I'm a lady, but it, it, it needs to be said because I promise you the good, bad, and ugly. So when things are happening, I want you to know it, okay? Um, so I've been eating pretty well, drinking the water, getting the protein in. Um, I'm pretty regular, you know, have bowel movements every single day, right? And sometimes more than once a day, but every day. Um, I know somebody from our community said that she hasn't... Um, going to the bathroom in seven days. And I told her she needs to call her um, her doctor and get this that resolved as quickly as possible. I can't even imagine a whole week um, because I'm very regular until yesterday morning, right? So yesterday morning, um, I, I was trying to go and I couldn't, right? So the, the problem was I wanted to go first thing in the morning as I usually do, but nothing was coming out. Um, even though I could feel it, there was something there, right? And I'm trying not to be too graphic, um, but you know what I mean, right? I I also wanted to weigh myself, right? So I wanted to weigh in and I didn't want any excess weight. I wanted to release anything that was hindering, would hinder the scale, right? Um, before I stepped onto the scale, like I usually do, like it's not a big deal, right? Um, but then that's when, you know, I truly started to struggle right? I was, it was a few hours later, I waited and it was a few hours later and I was trying to go, but I couldn't. And I decided to take a stool softener, um, which doesn't take long to work on me because I don't take medication that often, that kind of med medicate stool softeners that often, but nothing was moving. And that's when it started to get scary. Like a it was like kind of moving a tiny bit. So I felt like I was kind of stuck in between. And then something happened to change everything, right? I was, I was in a lot of pain because things were really stuck, right? I was pushing and trying to, you know, release it. It would not go. Um, it got really stuck. And so um, the first thing I did was, and, and this is kind of uh, something that you can try too, if this ever happens to you. The first thing I did was, I calmed myself down, right? Because I was like, what is happening to my body right now? So I calmed myself down. I started to take deep and slow breaths, right? Then I drank some water. I stood up. I sat down. I stood up. I walked around thinking that if I could just get some movement in, I can get things moving and release it, right? And it was so painful. Oh, it was so painful. Um, so then I took uh, I took a little bit more of the stool softener, and I'll share with you what I actually take. Um, uh, because it was so painful, I was trying to walk around. I took a little more of the stool softener, and I continued to stay calm, right? I, 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 this is something that can cause you to panic because you're, you know, if you kind of start to feel like you're not in control of your body. This is what I took. Um, I don't know if it's showing the right way, but Ducalax, um, the liquid one, I keep it in the fridge. Um, and it says, um, works naturally with your body, relieves in as little as 30 minutes, um, and it's a stimulant free. So this is what I 
um, had took. Um, I'm not a doctor, right? This is just one girl's journey. And the reason why I took this, this is something that I keep on hand. Uh, I kept it, I had, I, I had bought it when I first started taking the medication just so that I had it because I knew that constipation could be a side effect. The reason why I take that is because I'm a bariatric sur uh, surgery patient, right? I had two bariatric surgeries. I had one in 2009 and I had another one in 2019. I had the lap band first and then I had gastric bypass. So um, when I had my very first bariatric surgery, the doctor told me to get that. Um, they said that the anesthesia causes severe um, constipation. And I was so afraid of it that I went and got that. But I didn't have anywhere near a, as a problem with constipation after anesthesia as I did yesterday. You know, that was no, nothing. It was like you had it on hand, but it was nothing. And it was really started to get scary for me. So um, I was in a lot of pain. It was stuck, like it was not moving anywhere. So I calmed myself down. I kept taking the deep breaths. Um, as I mentioned, I was getting up, I was walking around, I was trying to get things to remove, move to shift so that I could get it out. But I was afraid to, it was so painful. I was afraid to push. Right. So I wanted to really relax my body and continue to breathe. Right. Um, I, 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 wa I wanted to push, but I was afraid that I was going to tear something. Right. Because it felt like, um, compacted rocks in my body. And I'm trying not to be too graphic, but it felt like it was just compacted and it was hard as rocks, like little pebbles all together in my body, right? Um, I, I took my, uh, my time. Uh, I continued to breathe and eventually, and it took about a half an hour. Eventually I was able to push and release it all, it all. And it, I was, it was like, there was a lot to be released in my system. But after all of that, I was really sore and I was exhausted. You would have thought like I was I was delivering a baby or something, right? Because I was put I was breathing and trying to get comfortable and all the things. And after all of that, and I think the anxiety of, oh my gosh, what is going on? Um I just, you know, was really, really sore and exhausted. I sat on the sofa and I started to think about um, what happened, right? Um, that's, that's when I really started to think about, like, what could have caused such severe constipation, right? Because I'd never, I've never experienced anything like that in my life, even after bariatric surgery. Like I mentioned, I didn't, it was nothing like that. And I've been constipated before. Like, you know, you take a little something, you're good but nothing like this, right? And that's when I realized what I had done differently than ever before, right? So just two days before I had given myself an injection, I give myself the medication, um, which was three days early, right? Three days early. You see that I had been taking the medication in 10 day increments, right? Every 10 days instead of every seven days, due to um, the shortage, right? We couldn't get the medication. So my doctor told me, I want you to switch from taking it every seven days to every 10 days. And now that um, things seem to be loosening up and I can get the 12.5 milligrams, that's the, the dose that I'm on. Um, and for those of you who are new, uh, Zepbound is the medication that I'm taking. And it starts at 2.5 milligrams. Then it goes to five. The next dose is five. Then it's 7.5. 0.5, and then it goes up to 10 milligrams, and then it's 12.5, and the top, the highest dose is 15 milligrams. I'm on 12.5, uh, mainly because the shortage, I would have been on 10 milligrams, but we couldn't find 10, so I titrated up to 12.5 milligrams with my doctor's advice, and I've been on 12.5, I think this is my second or third month on 12.5, but I took it early. Um, um, the, the doc, the, the medication can be taken, um, four days apart, right? No, I think it's, you can't take it any earlier than four days apart. So I waited the four days and I took it early because I was trying to get myself back onto my seven day rotation. And I really wanted to be taking it on Thursdays, right? Cause I was taking it every Thursday before and I was trying to get back to that. So that's the reason why I took it 
earlier, right? I took the 12.5 mil milligrams and I was eating a lot of protein and probably should have had even more water than I had. I was drinking my water, but based on the change in taking that medication earlier, I probably should have had more water and more vegetables, right? Um, I don't currently take any magnesium. A lot of the channels you'll find, they recommend the magnesium supplements to help you with this, help keep you regular. I don't take it because I'm already taking so much stuff because I'm a bariatric patient. So I always also take extra vitamins and everything for that. Um, in addition to my medication, the still, still the medications that my doctor has me on uh, for these comorbidities that I have. Um, hopefully I'll be off of those, you know, in time, but right now I still take a lot of medication. So I didn't want to add anything else to that, right? Because I'm already taking so much as being a bariatric patient too. So um, that might change in the future, but for now, that's what it is. Um, the other thing that I thought about was Metamucil. I've never taken Metamucil before. Oh, that's not true. I took it one time when I was really, really sick and I needed to pass things, but that was many, many years ago, um, my husband's uh, mother gave it to me. But my mom used to take it and my husband takes it regularly and he never has a problem. He gets all his fiber in. And <laughs> he is very regular. He doesn't have any problems. And so uh, yesterday I was thinking like maybe that's something that I, I might consider taking, um, but I'm not doing it right now. So here's what I want to leave you with. You know, my advice to you is Talk to your doctor, of course, if about constipation and ask what um, you can take in the event that you have um, any challenges with moving your bowels um, and keep that whatever your doctor tells you to take. Keep it in house so that you have it. Um, again, this is what I take. Um, it's been great for me. It works well. I haven't had any problems with it, but check with your doctor to see. Um, and I only take it because that's what I was taking back, you know, after I, right after I had my surgery. Um, that's what my doctor recommended. Two, so that's the first thing. So find out what you, what in the case that anything happens, you have it right on hand because you will not be able to go out to the store to grab anything. You will need either your spouse, your partner, your family member to go get something for you, but it'll be very difficult for you to get in a car and drive feeling th that way. Um, so drink the required water. Whatever your doctor tells you you should be drinking, drink it. Of course, eat an adequate amount of fiber, get your fruits and veggies in. Um, and um, number number four, I would say is, so number one is keep the medication, keep the, the stool softener or whatever you need on hand. Number two is drink the required amount of water. Make sure that you are thoroughly hydrated. Number three, eat adequate amount of fiber, um, fruits and veggies, you know, make sure you get, you're getting that in. Um, number four, don't panic. Don't panic. I think what really helped me from having to be rushed to the hospital, right? Because I've heard people had instances where they had to go to the hospital. Um, and I wasn't, there was no blood or anything. I just, I'm, I'm not trying to be too graphic, but I, I feel like I want to tell you this because if it ever happens to you, I just want you to be um, well prepared. I want you to be equipped and armed you know, to know what you can do. Um, don't panic. Stay calm. Breathe. I think the breathing really helped eventually release things. It helped relax my body. So because I was tense, like, oh, my gosh, um, breathe, relax your body, be patient, be patient. Um, and you should be able to um, pass it. You should be able to relieve yourself. OK. Um, and if you um, take a second dose um, before the seven days, like I did, if for some reason you need to change your schedule up with the medication, just be prepared, right? Prepare your your body ahead of time for that, right? Making sure you're drinking extra water. You're be like, make sure, and you might even want to take something to, to make sure that everything goes through as planned, right? Um, um, I, with my son, we call it dropping kids off at the pool, right? Making sure that you can easily drop your kids off without resistance to the pool, right? I certainly hope that this has helped you. Um, I do not want anyone to ever experience that. It was very, very painful. Even today, I'm able to sit, you know, comfortably, but I can still 
feel the remnants of that. It's still a little tender, right? Still a little tender. Um, so I don't want that to happen to you. And I just wanted to share that good, bad, and ugly, right? Um, and I certainly welcome any of your questions or comments. Please feel free to leave them here. If, if that has happened to you and you have another solution that you want to share with our community, please um, share it in the comments so that everybody can see it um, as well, because we're here to help one another, right? I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who are joining us for the retreat, it is happening. It is happening. You can find information about it if you're if you're late, if you're late to the party and you're like, I still want to come, I still want to come. We've got some amazing things planned. You can still join us. Doors will be closing soon, but you can still join us. You will find information in the notes below. Thank you so much for joining us. And I want you to go out there. I want you to be bold because um, that's what it takes to really go on this journey. I want you to be brave because it takes courage to share the good, bad, and ugly of this journey, right? Um, everything's not always roses, uh, but we can get through it. Um, together, right? We can get through it together. And I want you to be brilliant because you are. Um, so with that, be bold, be brave, be brilliant. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.